Welcome everybody to episode 166 of uh, The China Show, formerly known as the ADV Podcasts. You might notice there's a, a blank space over here. Seymour tried to play Imagine Dragons as the intro music, so I had to kick him out of the office. But in all honesty, he's um, currently uh, celebrating his 10th anniversary with his wife, so we decided that it's only fair that he take the week off. Don't worry, he'll be back next week. But I've got quite the show for you today, so stay tuned. In fact, let's just jump right into it, or should I say saunter right into it, with what's new, where we talk about everything that's new to do with China. Um, and, well, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's take a look here. <clears throat> so, we've got a guy standing there. He's got a little bit of a pillar in front of him. I wonder what's going to happen. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. This is, uh, well, obviously not properly constructed. There's no rebar in there. And so they probably used it for fake crops. Yeah, that's not what you want, especially if kids are playing around. And this is what we call the Zhongguo Tersa of uh, Jia Gongcheng, which means tofu dross or tofu dreg or tofu slag construction. And this is something that plagues China all over. And this really has a lot to do with our main topic today, which of course you saw the thumbnail where it says uh, something gross or terrible is coming out of these um, fire hoses in China. Let me show you. So <clears throat> let me take you on a little journey over here to a part of Sichuan province in China. Everybody knows Sichuan province, right? If you don't know, that's where you get uh, sort of spicy hot pot and all that from, very nice place. Um, Yibin City in Sichuan, a very brave guy, walked up to the fire hose on his floor in his building, as you can see here, okay? I want you to take a note. I zoomed and enhanced this for you here, but um, <clears throat> this is the inspection which was done on the 6th of this month, okay? And you can see that uh, everything passed. If you can read Chinese, the water, the, the hose, the, the everything passed. It's all been okayed and it's been signed off by an inspector over there. Okay, so let's go back to the video and see what's happening. Well, that makes me feel very confident. I don't know about you guys. Um, if anyone out there is saying dry riser, you wait and see. You wait and see. I've got something to tell you about that later. Anyway, three days ago in Jiangxi province, okay? Now, to give you a little bit of, um, uh, I don't know, scope on what's going on here, this particular place in Yugang County in um, Jiangxi province. Jiangxi province is actually a very beautiful province. I've ridden around there plenty of times on my motorcycle because it was quite close to Guangdong down, well, when I say quite close, it's pretty far, but uh, it's easy to get to. You can see up in the top corner all the information. This is the date it happened, the time it happened, the location that it happened. The reason you've got all that information is it's because it's from an inspector's phone. So take a look here. <clears throat> I need to put something in perspective, by the way. If you wanted to drive all the way from that first guy in Sichuan where we saw him opening and no water came out, if you wanted to drive all the way to this place in Jiangxi, it would take you approximately <clears throat> 17 hours and 7 minutes. In other words, it's very far away. So it's not like something that's happening in an isolated area is what I'm getting at here. And now we've got some inspectors. This is this is on the 28th floor, they're testing. No water. So then they go down to the 6th floor. Now listen, What's important here is not just some average guy living in the building. You can see the information down. Where is it? Down with the blue heading. It shows that this is a, an actual inspection. So this is being logged. So this, like I said, is not just a, an average Joe filming it. This is actually the, the inspectors. And I'll tell you why. 
Okay. So they go down to the sixth floor. No water. Okay, so why is this important? I'll tell you. See, from the 28th floor to the 6th floor of this particular building, there's no water coming out of the uh, fire hoses here. Why is it important? Well, that's because there was a fire in that building on this day when they're busy testing it. They're testing it after the fire, uh, which engulfed, I think, two apartments. Anyway, this is the aftermath <clears throat> of the fire, and we actually have some footage of the fire there as well. So, give it a second. Mm -hmm. You know, Simil and I talk about this a lot, in the elevators, for instance, they always have those inspection things signed off saying, yes, it's inspected, it's been checked. But they just go sign the paper. They don't actually do the inspection. This is to save money and time. Anyway, this is the building that was on fire over here. And somebody flew a drone while it was uh, still on fire up there, which you can see over here. So it continued to burn because the fire hoses didn't work and they couldn't extinguish the fire. So it just burnt itself out. You can see that the uh, fire engines are down there, uh, running hoses into the building, and yet nothing's working. And that's an important detail, which I'll, uh, you know, I'll tell you about in a bit. But don't worry, because if you can't get the water going, you can always grab the fire extinguishers. Because in those sort of fire boxes that you get in the apartment buildings, underneath the uh, hose, you actually get another little box which you can open, which has fire extinguishers in it, or you'll find fire extinguishers in the building. So all you need is a Chinese fire extinguisher and you'll be able to help. This is a great demonstration. Mm. Yep, so at least you'll be safe, you know, at the end of the day. Hmm. Yep. Very effective. Bet you these guys are regretting putting on this demonstration right now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what you see behind you now is something I filmed myself. Okay. I actually know all about this because this happened in my building. When I was living in Shenzhen, in one of the buildings I was living in, which was in the middle of downtown, right next to the uh, Wangxiangcheng Mixi Mall, a uh, very fancy area, very sort of downtown posh area, someone was operating an illegal business out of their apartment storing chemicals, okay? Something to do with, uh, um, I don't know, uh, electronics. So they had the chemicals there to strip things from, you know, boards and stuff. Anyway, it caught fire. And actually, I think it was four apartments uh, actually were gutted by this fire. And because these buildings are made out of concrete, thankfully, the fires usually don't spread too far. But, you know, all the apartments above him caught fire and then, you know, subsequent above. It was a big thing and they couldn't get the fire out in time. So a couple of days later, because this made the news, obviously, and it was massive. Actually, I tried to look, and I do have it somewhere. It's in one of my videos that I was filming. I actually was driving back to my apartment, and I filmed it out of my car. Like, what is this smoke? It turns out it was my apartment block. What they did was a couple of days later, they they set off the sort of fire alarms in the building. Um, and so I was in my apartment, and the fire alarms went off, so everybody had to evacuate. Okay, as you can see here, this is me walking down the stairs, evacuating. Very, very nice and clean. Okay, and they got us all outside. 
And the reason was there wasn't a fire. No, this was them doing a fire drill, which I'd been living in, in, in this apartment for years and there hadn't been any fire drills. But of course, after four apartments burned and uh, huge damage, I, I can't remember if anyone was killed. I think, in fact, I think it's possible. I know someone was murdered in my building. Um, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Thing is, finally they decided they're gonna do a fire drill. Now this was all just, as usual, a bunch of bullshit. They took us downstairs. So everybody comes down from their apartments. Here they're all lining up, okay? And we're like, where's the fire? Okay, they had um, organized a little demonstration for everyone to watch, you see. They were going to show um, how ready they were for a fire in the future. So what they got was, once everyone was downstairs and kind of all crowded around in this specific area, they got all the what are called Baoan, the sort of security guards, who are really just kind of, in general, they they kind of take care of everything. They're not just security guards, they're the Baoan. And they had like a fire marshal there. Now, please pay attention to the guy with the camera. There's two of them. This was just a big PR stunt, okay? They got us all downstairs so that they could take photos of these guys doing drills with everyone in the background to say, look, they taught us fire safety and stuff, but they didn't teach us shit. All these guys did was stand there like a very disheveled uh, army group or something and uh, get a lot of photos taken. Then they ran off to the side, grabbed a hose, plugged it into one of those um, things that you saw being opened earlier, sprayed some water, and that was that. All right? Um, and the reason why I'm relating all of this stuff to you is I need to make sure that uh, you understand the state of things in China. And I need to be accurate about these things, right? I'm just going to fast forward this a bit. It's a bit boring, but you see the guy there taking, taking photos. I saw the photos he took. They posted it to like the groups and stuff in the building. Anyway, they bought all the cleaning staff. The cleaning staff are the ones in the blue. You know, they collect the rubbish and so on and all that from in the stairwells. They brought them down to that guy taking photos. You can see him pop up in the background again somewhere. Anyway, now you get two kinds of systems in these big high rises to put out fires. You get something called a wet riser system, which that building was. Like I said, I saw them open hoses and spray without any fire engines or anything nearby. And a lot of the buildings I stayed in in China, in fact, I think all of the buildings I stayed in in China had a wet riser system. Okay, and how this works is it's connected to the mains, as you can see from the diagram. I'm not trying to bore you here, I just want to make sure that we all understand this. <clears throat> connected to the mains, or it has big water tanks on top of the building. Some of the buildings I stayed in had the water tanks. And then, you know, obviously you need water, you just turn on one of those uh, hose things, water sprays out. You do get a second kind of system, which is called a dry rising system, a dry riser system, where you need something like a, um, a fire engine plugs in to the, the bottom of the building and pumps the water up from the fire engine into these. So you might think, maybe it's a dry riser system. That's why when they open up the, uh, the valves, nothing came out. Well, no, that can't be the case because as we see here in this video, when the inspectors were opening the, um, the 28th floor all the way down to the sixth floor, they did them all, um, the fire engines were there hooked up. So even if it was a dry riser, riser system, it didn't work. And this is something that plagues China in a massive, massive way is something called tofu drag or tofu dross or tofu slag construction. And it's about taking shortcuts, right? Shortcuts which inevitably lead to these very unsafe situations. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I've got some footage to show you after this, but I just thought that this was kind of related that it turns out that uh, Chinese local governments have used fake property deals to boost their revenue recently. Now, we all hear about China's GDP growing even when it doesn't make sense, right? You have this massive COVID lockdowns where nobody can work and all businesses are shut down. And yet the GDP increased. And, you know, the economy is on the rise. You keep hearing how great China's economy is. And that's because China is the land of shortcuts and facades. OK, and this is one of the things they've been doing. The local Chinese governments have been uh, selling land that they have to their own entities in order to make it look like they've been bringing in money and bringing in revenue. So they're like, hey, here, I'm selling it to myself. And then on paper, look, we made millions or billions of, uh, 
our dollars because we had this big land sale. Meanwhile, they just sold it to themselves. So just bear this in mind. The Chinese economy is in a lot of trouble right now, and they're doing all these underhanded tricks to try and uh, prop it up and boost it. And this all ties into this uh, uh, tofu drag stuff because they sell these things. They get these lots of investment from potential buyers. They get investment, and then they quickly build these high rises, but very quickly and very cheaply. And this is when things go wrong. This is when you get shortcuts taken and the fire hydrants don't work or the fire hoses don't work. Back to the Zhongguo Tese, which is Dofu Jia Gongcheng. Okay, Tofu Dross construction. Um, I'll give you a couple of examples that you can see in the background here of um, just a few. I could go on for hours. I've got hours of footage of this kind of thing going on. But things are built fast in China, but they're built cheaply. All right? Not all of them are as bad as this, but, you know, do you want to be building a house out of bricks that just crumble in your hands? Um, you know the story of the three little pigs. You get the um, brother builds a house out of straw, and then somebody builds a house out of sticks, and then the, big, the, the smart pig builds a house out of bricks. Well, you know, we never heard about the first little pig. There were four of them, but um, he built his house out of Chinese tofu bricks, and it collapsed on him and killed him. So he wasn't even part of the three little pig story because he, he got killed by his uh, tofu jia construction house, you know, before the big bad wolf could turn up. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's not what you want to see. Um, this is whatever. So you're going to build a, a little rural house, okay, out of these bricks. So what? Okay, so what if it falls out, it falls over if someone gives it a swift kick or something like that? It's, uh, you know, it's out in the rural countryside. No one cares about the rural countryside in China, right? But what about high-rise buildings and the rebar just snaps when you pull it by hand? Is that... Is that not a worry? I don't know if you guys know about rebar, but that stuff is tough. All right? I bought some the other day to try and um, anchor a, a carport I was uh, putting up, like one of those tarp type things. And man, did I struggle to try and bend that stuff. I had to smack it with hammers and vices, and it's so tough. It's impossible to bend by hand. Never, never mind break by hand. So this is just cheap crap pig iron type stuff that's kind of supposed to be rebar, okay? Look at how it's coming apart. This guy's just smacking it and they're breaking. Now, look at those heavy-duty cables. This looks like it's part of a bridge or something, which is very concerning. And uh, these fake hollow bricks that they use um, on these real estate projects. Don't worry, it's not like load-bearing, but that'll be put up to make a wall or something like that, and that's something that can be broken. And how about a uh, high-speed rail viaduct over here, whatever you call those things? Looks legit. Fairly new construction. Um, you got people riding on high-speed rails above that stuff, you know? This is uh, concerning. Now, some of these clips are fairly old, but they're very good to show. Like, this particular clip is from uh, 2015 or so. But it's good to show that this is stuff that exists. The buildings that people are living in China in right now, a lot of them are like this. I mean, take a look at this. This is a very tall building. See, it looks up. That's got to be, what, 30-something stories high? And if he can just uh, scrape away the supporting pillar like this, you know, you've got to worry. Was this building ever uh, completed and occupied? Probably. A lot of buildings that have this level of quality were occupied, for sure. Um, and that's just not something you really want to see. You know? That's scary. It's very, very scary. Anyway, we all know about the tofu drag uh, construction in China, and I just wanted to bring it back to your attention because this is something that concerns everyone. And uh, even people who are just like, whatever, don't care about it, carry on with their life. It can affect you in ways that you don't realize, like the fire hydrants not working. Because what happened with those uh, fire hoses probably is when it was being constructed, they either, either didn't put in pipes or they did put in pipes, but they didn't put them in properly or they just connected them with dirt in them and concrete or something. And so they're plugged up. Who knows? But it's because of lack of oversight. It's because of a terrible, terrible lack of ethics and a massive culture of shortcuts in China, 
that uh, that apartment had to burn down. But now, let's uh, let's move on to something a little hilarious. This is still what's new, but this is kind of um, uh, I just gotta I just gotta show you this. Okay, so I'll preface it quickly. I recently made a video about uh, electric cars. You know the fields of electric cars that are rotting in China. This is true. There are fields of electric cars rotting in China. And um, the clips I got from uh, people in China and Chinese people that filmed them uh, are verified that they're definitely true. So it's a true thing. But the CCP cannot accept criticism. And so they send their attack dogs after me to try and discredit me. And this is the funniest attempt to discredit me I've ever seen in my life. So I just wanted to share it with you all. Let's take a look at what's going on I suddenly on got massively attacked uh, saying I'm lying about the Chinese electric vehicles. EV fanboys are just a, cut from a different cloth. Now you may be thinking, hey, Shilking, I mean, this guy sounds, he sounds legit. He sounds like he's telling the truth. Well, I would question why then at this point of 649, 651, 653, 655, 815, 857, 909. And at other places during the video, he showed aerial drone shots and close-up shots right next to his face in mega close-ups of gasoline tanks. Clearly, places where you put in your fuel pump. Point of 649, 6.55. I'm reviewing the new BJEV EC3. BAIC BJEV EC3 is equipped with a 45 kW electric motor that's powered by a 30.66 kWh ternary lithium battery. Clearly, places where you put in your fuel pump. 651, 653. Clearly, places where you put in your fuel pump. 815, 857. close-ups of gasoline tanks. Clearly, places where you put in your fuel pump. Guys, honestly, if you want someone who's going to give you an accurate indicator of what's going on in China, this guy who pretends that he's a Chinese person who hates China, uh, he's probably not the right place to go to for your source material. It's almost getting me like tinfoil hat level conspiracy level <laughs> that this is all planned or something. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't really know what's going on, that was uh, the subject of this Monday's, this past Monday's uh, Xiaoban Ho, which is the private VIP show that we have. If you want to find out more about it, um, you know, please go watch the show. I will explain a little bit about it, though. It's it's hilarious because they sent this guy who's supposed to be an EV expert to try and debunk my video because they cannot handle it when the truth gets released. So they try to debunk my video by getting him to um, attack me and say that those are gasoline cars and not um, electric cars. But of course, I know all those uh, cars. I've driven, I've actually driven some of those electric cars in China. And my Chinese car that I drove over for, for over a year actually has an EV equivalent that looks like that. It's a little car like that where they just basically put the charging port in the gas cap. So it's very interesting to me that someone who's supposedly an EV expert doesn't know anything about Chinese EVs and how they work. Anyway, it turns out that it's tied to Chinese propagandists like uh, that come from Ai Chongqing and, uh, you know, the Gulf Shill and all that. So it makes sense. It's a, it's a Chinese uh, CCP operation of some kind anyway. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to uh, patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and join the Shaban Ho tier so that you can watch our VIP shows, which we do every Monday, myself and Seamilk. This uh, past Monday, it was just me solo due to the aforementioned um, anniversary thing that Seamilk's uh, doing at the moment. But uh, this coming week, it'll be the two of us again. And hopefully, if you've got the means and you can join us, we'll see you there because we always have something interesting to say. Anyway. It is now time for us to hit Soft Power Hour. You're going to love this one, guys. Soft Power Hour is where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind through the internet and through propaganda and various other means, okay? And um, I've got something here that I have to just show you. It's, it's ridiculous, okay? 
This tweet went viral. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at it. What does it say? China is 3,000 years ahead of the West. Okay, I, I screen recorded this like two days ago, so it had 24 million views. Probably has more by now, but I want you to pay attention to what it's showing. It's showing Chongqing at night, okay? Specifically what you can see here, that lit up building thing. You've probably seen it before, that sort of uh, lit up little town on the river type thing. It's called Hongya Dong, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, now, this particular account that's putting this out here is some kind of a weird artsy fartsy parody account type thing okay it's not i they're they're half serious half not i don't really understand what their deal is i i don't care but they've been posting ridiculous chinese propaganda but to the point of ridiculousness right because nobody would ever believe that that was true that cgi thing but what kind of really annoyed me is that they posted my documentary okay that's all cut out of my documentary, Stay Awesome China, where I went, met with Naomi, um, Sexy Cyborg in Shenzhen. That's drone, sh drone footage that I filmed myself, right? <clears throat> and uh, the fact that they put this on there, and uh, the, the worst part is, is that this is all cut directly from my documentary here. And then they say, um, oh, if you want to see more of this, subscribe. See, subscribe for more content like this. What the hell? What do you mean subscribe to you? That's my content there. Don't steal my content and use it to get subscribers. It's some bullshit right there. Just as proof, this is where it came from. Alright, it's still a secret. <laughs> if you um if you would like to uh, see this documentary, by the way. It's free, it's on YouTube right now, and there's a link down in the description of this video. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, by the way, I don't like it when people steal <clears throat> steal stuff and claim it for, as, as their own. It's kind of annoying. Um, a lot of people ask me about Naomi, by the way. And, you know, I got to tell you that uh, in person, she's one of the sweetest, nicest, most generous people I've ever met. She's a very genuine person, regardless of her online persona and what uh, what goes on with her tweets, because people often contact me about her. I don't know anything about that. I don't know and I don't, you know, that's got nothing to do with it. She's a friend of mine in real life and uh, she's got the typical Cantonese hospitality. She's such a nice person. And uh, if you'd ever met her in real life and spent any time with her like I have, you'd see that she's just incredibly genuine and, and a very, very nice person. So, you know, I just wanted to get that out of the way if anyone wanted to try and ask me about her later. Um, here's the thing, though. That uh, Let's get back to that silly um, whatever that strange Twitter account was, because it's not just that account posting this kind of uh, propaganda using Chongqing. Chongqing has now become, Chongqing has become the darling child of Chinese propaganda. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because of a company called Ai Chongqing and a, um, a particular group of people that work there now are doing China's outward propaganda. They're sort of international propaganda. They've got some foreigners working there. And uh, their whole thing is to boost the image of China by using Chongqing. Okay. So let's talk about uh, this particular clip that you see with all the, uh, you know, specifically that Hongya Dong area over there. We have to talk about this because it's very important. Oh, I love this comment. It says, like, I think these just didn't sell too well like last Christmas. Um, <clears throat> this clip you've probably seen, and I want to show it to you. It looks amazing. It looks wonderful. I, I love this clip. And everyone has been posting this around like, wow, China's so cyberpunk and uh, whatnot and so forth and so on. And they keep showing this clip. It's again, Hong Ya Dong. See this? This is called Hong Ya Dong. Uh, Hong Ya Cave. Okay, it's called. Um, whoops, why is it? Never mind. So now here's the thing about Hong Ya Dong. I searched because, okay, I first have to tell all of you guys, I've been to Chongqing. But when I went to Chongqing, I must admit it was a long time ago. It was when I first got to China. I went on this uh, trip and I went all around. So it would have been about 2007, early 2008, something like that. So I'm always like, okay, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps things have changed because things do change quite quickly in China. So 
the thing is, when I went to Chongqing, it was awful, incredibly polluted, ramshackle, you know, like a lot of the, the cities run down. They got a very glitzy CBD, like all Chinese cities do. Um, but in general, I found it because I, I like to explore and I walked around. I found it to be very sort of run down in comparison to Shenzhen, where I lived and very polluted. So I see all this glistening stuff and I'm like, yeah, OK, I get it. But that's something about China is it always looks better at night. And that's because with all the lights on, you don't get to see, you know, the the imperfections. Let's put it that way. So I searched on YouTube for Hong Yadong daytime. You can actually see my search up there. And there's not a single video showing it in the data. Not a single one. I was like, what the hell's going on here? I searched around Hong Yadong daytime on just normal, like everyday Western sites in English. There's nothing about it in the day. So I had to go to the Chinese internet, okay? And search on Baidu to find, you know, Hong Yadong Baitian, Chongqing Hong Yadong Baitian, which means, you know, the Hong Yadong in Chongqing in the day. I found this guy. Okay, I found a couple. I'm going to show you this, right? So he's saying, hey guys, have you guys ever seen uh, Hong Yadong in the daytime? Okay, there it is. So it's like this place over here is Hong Yadong. Now you see that is what I remember about Chongqing. Look at the sky. Look at the river. Um, and he said it right there. At night they turn on the lights and it's especially beautiful. right? Take a look. It looks pretty drab. Okay. He's just saying he's going to go there later to, to film. He's just explaining how you get there. 这就是白天的红牙洞。各位觉得怎么样呢？是不是有点过于平淡了呢？ He even said it there. He's like, oh, well, guys, this is uh, Hong Yadong in the day. What do you guys think? It's a bit plain, isn't it? I mean, that's his own words. 没错, 红牙洞啊, 就是适合晚上来打卡的一个地方. 白天来看的话, 确实有点平淡. <laughs> 那好的,朋友们, 这一期啊, 小北就过来给大家分享一下, 我们白天看到的红牙洞是怎样的一番景? I want to say thanks to this guy, because, to be honest, it's it's good to see that. Because Chinese people are skeptical too. Um, in fact, take a look at the next video I've got here. Hello, Again, look, this, by the way, this is 2023. This is not some old crap, okay? This is something that I got from the Chinese internet. The the guy previously on the bridge is 2022. This is 2023, this particular footage. <laughs> okay, I got to translate what he just said. He said, Hong Yadong gives me this feeling that life is life and TikTok is TikTok. <laughs> In other words, real life is different to TikTok. You know, Douyin is uh, Chinese TikTok. He's just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and he said, he said, now he understands why locals don't go to Hong Yadong, because it looks crap in the day, you know? 
And it's one of those things that looks fantastic on a, a Instagram or, well, in China, a Douyin or a TikTok or something. It looks amazing, right? When you saw that uh, China's 3,000 years ahead and you saw that, right, you were thinking, wow, look how amazing it is. It's, again, cherry-picked nonsense. Okay, this is what Chongqing is really like. Look at the sky. That's what I remember, okay? That is just exactly how it was. In fact, worse. I'm sure it's improved somewhat because that's a little bit better. But seriously, you see these lovely cherry pick things and you could do that with anything. You could take a car that only runs once a month because every time you try to start it, it doesn't work. But then you like turn it on and oh, it's running. You quickly grab your camera and you're like, this is the most reliable car in the world. It starts every time. You know, you can do that. Okay, this is just some more, but I wanted to be fair, so I scoured, okay? I'm like, I want to find Hong Ya Dong in the daytime on a good day when it's not just polluted and shit. Because, look, every single time I've found footage of Hong Ya Dong, you look in the distance and it's just crap. It's like, looks not very nice. Can I say that? Like, you know, this, hey, they got the fake painted bricks thing over here. You know, like every single time, it's got a very bad visibility. It looks run down. I mean, this is the stuff you don't see during the day, okay? Look here. See like all this, this gross um, corrosion runoff and, and uh, whatever you want to call it. You can't see that at night. And that's why it looks so impressive. If you see it during the day, you're like, oh, you know, it's kind of run down. It's kind of not that great. Anyway, like I said, I searched. I'm like, okay, I want to find it because I want to be fair. I want to be able to show people what it looks like on a good day. This is the best footage I could find. Okay, now that, do that looks pretty okay. See, that's a nice kind of clear day. It's still not perfectly clear, but that's... Clear, I want to be fair, I want people to see what this place really looks like. And it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so that's Hong Ya Dong. Now, every time you see that lit up scene on the river that looks cyberpunk and looks amazing, now you've seen what it really looks like in the day. So now you can actually judge what it is. So anyway, I decided how about we look at what Chongqing in general looks like. So I just reached out to a couple of friends if they could send me some clips of downtown or just around Chongqing, right? So this is Chongqing as well. Look at the, look at the state of the buildings. Okay, this is what I remember. Now, of course, like most Chinese cities, you have a very glossy sort of CBD downtown area where you've got very shiny skyscrapers and they look nice. That's what you see in all the footage. But this is the majority of the city. Looks like this. Okay, just kind of run down, badly maintained, gross looking concrete, which is kind of corroding here and there and not looking very nice. I mean, if anyone thinks that looks nice, you got to check yourself out. Um, as you can see there in the distance, you can see the skyscrapers and whatnot. The river's always kind of gross. Whatever, you know, that's, that's life. And one of the big things that people don't seem to realize is they have all those lights on at night. And you know how they keep all those lights on at night is by burning coal. This is a Chongqing coal burning power plant in Chongqing. This is why the skies look so crap, is because they burn all this coal everywhere. And there's, of course, factory and pollution and all that. This is, China keeps increasing its coal burning, by the way. <clears throat> you don't see this. You always see, oh, solar fields and here's a windmill or whatever. And China's new, renewable stuff. Um, anyway, here's some drone footage from uh, approximately, uh, I think it's about 40 to 50 miles away from that Hong Ya Dong place in Chongqing, right? Okay, here I've actually mapped out where it is. This place, this Changsheng Tiao, um, and you can see it's run down. Just get out of the city center. Now, this is quite far out of the city center, obviously. This is an hour out, um, and it's ramshackle. And this is what you see in the rural countryside of China. Once you leave the city centers, you come across 
this more sort of, or I don't even know what to call it, sort of rural sprawl. Here is a little closer where things are kind of run down. Um, and this is where the laborers and so on would live, the people outside that come into the city to work, just on the outskirts. But it's still considered part of Chongqing here. Um, and then I went to look for something a bit more representative of downtown in Chongqing. And I found this, uh, this YouTuber called Streets of Asia, who has a fairly long walking video. I've linked them down in the description so that you can go look for yourself if you'd like to later. And this is right down in the, in, in the center of Chongqing. So you can see that once you look past the facade, okay, the flashy lights, the propaganda videos, the uh, cherry picked on a clear night when you can't see any of the imperfections, China's 3,000 years ahead of the West uh, stuff, this is what actually lies behind it. Um, and of course, I'm not going to be, you know, pushing this too much. Um, this happens with most big cities in the world. You can look at places like LA. You got your nice glitzy areas and then you have your, um, you know, whatever is just out, outside Compton or whatever, or some like really bad areas that look crappy and are run down. That happens in all cities. But the difference is you don't have people out there pretending like LA is all glitz and glamorous Hollywood stuff. By the way, I've been to Hollywood and it's not glamorous. It looks like shit. There's lots of homeless people and crap going on there. Don't go there. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say to you is China and Chinese propagandists want you to believe that all of China is this glitzy little downtown fancy area. And they show these examples of just those glitzy downtown areas, like in Chongqing, the Hongyadong. And they think, and they want people to believe that that's what all of China's like. I've sped up the footage in the background, by the way. Like I said, I don't want to use the guy's content up. You can go watch it if you want. The link is in the description. But you can see just, kind of get it, an in general idea of what Chongqing actually looks like, right? A lot of handshake apartments. There's a lot of... Um, slummy, ramshackle type areas. And this is what I remember when I went to Chongqing is exactly this. And unfortunately, when I went to Chongqing in the very early days um, is when I had a little uh, point and shoot, um, what was it, Casio point and shoot camera. And I did take a bunch of photos, but my camera was actually stolen. And so I lost the SD card and everything on it. It was stolen when I got back to Shenzhen and it was back in the day when I didn't have, you know, my YouTube channel or anything yet. So anyway, this is what I remember of Chongqing, and this is what it still looks like, according to the footage I found. Um, and I just wanted to point that out, the land of shortcuts and facades. Okay, <laughs> so um, I hope that you guys have been able to kind of understand what that's all about, really, now. Um, and I guess we can move on from this, really. So um, what else do we have for you today? That was soft power. I forgot. Did I run it? I f yeah, I did run the soft power hour thing. That was soft power hour. And um, I, I once again really just want to um, drive home the point that this is what soft power is. Soft power is making you believe something is amazing and great when it really in reality isn't. Make you believe that China is ahead of you or better than you in certain things or better than your country, when in reality it isn't, okay? How many people out there are crazy and think that China is ahead of the game when it comes to anything, really? Well, they're not crazy. They've just fallen for the propaganda and for the big push and all the money behind it, pushing all these influences like the, the electric shill king, Chinese uh, EV shill king, who's attacked me numerous times now. Um, these are the kind of people that are helping further this soft power push. Oh, look how incredible China is. They can't do anything wrong. Look at all their fancy cities. Look at all their amazing electric vehicles and how they're ahead of the game. Point out one little problem and they start to attack you as if you've insulted their mother or something. It's like, no, China could never do anything bad. You're a bad man. That's the uh, reaction that we get. But... Anyway, I've uh, kicked this one to death, really, haven't I? It's pretty straightforward. That's Chongqing. It's not 3,000 years ahead of the West. Never will be. This, in fact, to me, looks maybe 100 years behind. Maybe. 
Anyway, uh, let's move on. Now, today's a bit of a, a strange show, like I said, because it's just me running it solo, so I hope you don't mind. But I thought that we'd uh, pretty much skip directly into the Q&A section, all right? I'm leaving out Wumau Corner for today, although, actually, no, I'm going to talk about Wumau Corner. Excuse me. Let me get into Wumau Corner. Now, Wumau Corner is where we talk about the haters. And there's been a big thing that's happened over these last couple of days, something that I really do have to talk about, and something that I will be doing a video about on my channel, and that is this horrific thing that happened in Shandong province in China, where a guy, um, you've maybe seen the footage, I'm not showing it here, but a guy uh, murdered his wife by riding over her. She was on her bike, he drove her over, and then, you know, drove over her, reversed over her, saw, you know, poked her a few times, she's still alive, drove over her again and again, dragged her back onto the road to drive over her again and again. This is a horrific thing, and it really highlights the uh, domestic abuse issue in China and another issue that happens in China, this uh, phenomenon of uh, making sure that you kill someone if you knock them over, if you knock over a pedestrian or something. It's a documented societal issue in China. And... Um, the reason I'm putting this in Wumao Corner today is because I posted a uh, sent. Well, first of all, I re I, I shared it. I retweeted it with a content warning um, because I don't enjoy that kind of thing. I don't want people to see it, but it does point a very, very um, clear. Um, well, it paints a very clear picture of these problems, these societal problems that Chinese people have to suffer. Right. So I retweeted it. Um, it got uh, flagged and as a violation of Twitter's rules of sharing gore. Okay, fair enough. So I removed it. And then I carefully censored it with annotations and everything, and I made sure you couldn't see anything. And then I posted the censored version of it, um, which generated a lot of talk and also a massive amount of pushback from the CCP nationalist army because they don't want that kind of thing getting out there. But the very interesting thing that happened was my censored version, again, got flagged, mass flagged, and I was given a, like a, a violation warning and my account was locked until I removed it. But the uncensored version of it is shared freely on Twitter all over through Chinese uh, accounts and through other accounts. And it goes to show just how much the 50 cent army and the Chinese government pays attention to what I say and what I share. Because if other channels, I mean, other Twitter users, some of them bigger than me, some of them smaller than me, are sharing the uncensored version of this terrible, tragic murder um, and not getting removed, but I share a censored version of it and I get uh, suspended, it shows you how much they're paying attention, how much they're flagging my stuff and how much they're trying to suppress what I have to say. So uh, you only pick up flack when you're over the target, so to speak. And again, these issues of domestic violence in China, these issues of uh, um, the, the, stand, the bystander effect in China, <clears throat> the lack of good Samaritans is something that China's deathly afraid of getting out. So that's Wumao Corner. I wanted to fill you in. And now we're going to go straight to the Q&A section today. So Yamcha, for those of you who don't know, is where... Uh, we answer your questions and you question our answers, although today it'll just be me answering your questions and you'll be question questioning my answers. Um, it's time to loosen the tie. It is Friday after all. Everybody getting ready for a nice weekend, I hope. Fourth of July is coming up soon, so time to get those barbecues ready. And now I'm going to be answering your super chats. Now please feel free to ask me anything um, and let's just get through with this. So well, let me go back to the beginning. I did want to say a big thank you um, to David Lopan for gifting out some memberships. That's very nice of you. And uh, for all of you who don't know how this works, on Monday, we cut this Q&A section out of the show. And um, it gets, uh, you know, re-uploaded to Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast, you can watch the full uncut version. But you get to watch this live now. Um, and you also get to watch it over the weekend. It's just Monday we cut it out. Just so you know. All right, so let's get into it. Um, okay, Mark Carl said, I panicked, thought 50 Cent Army had gotten to you. No show last Friday. Yes, we apologize for that last Friday kerfuffle. We did have an issue with our studio and we had to move a bunch of stuff around. Uh, we had some equipment issues, so we thought we'd just take the week off rather than trying to do a, a substandard show. 
Um, and that Koala 1203 um, asked if I took a vacation to the port of Dandong. Port no, of I did Dandong. Not. <laughs> I did not take a vacation to the port of Dandong. Um, but thank you for asking. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Miss Soysaw says, shout out to my home city, Cincinnati's FBI office for catching a Chinese spy. Yes, congratulations. By the way, sorry, this footage in the background, that's, I'm on, I'm on that, that building over there. Um, this, this was quite, I got to tell you guys about this, uh, particular drone footage that I shot. It was hairy, okay? I decided to use this third-party program for flying drones because you know the DJI uh, software is quite limited but there's this really good and if you do have a DJI drone I suggest you look at it. it's called Lychee or Lychee because um, the DJI software is sus man it's real sus um, I tried to fly my drone the other day and it's like you must you know because you're in mainland China you your data will be sent to the CACC or something like that and blah 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 I was like nah okay not using that um, so I put this lychee or lychee on there and you can actually program waypoints and tell the drone what to do and where to go. So I decided I want to get a really nice panoramic shot of the city here. Okay. So I took it off and I set these waypoints, but I set them too far. And by the time the drone had lost signal, I realized that it wouldn't have had enough battery to make it all the way back to my apartment. So I was scrambling up there, trying to get it, force it to do the return home thing. Um, jumping from building to building, going up and down um, escalate, uh, sorry, elevators and stuff. But I finally got it to somehow get the signal to return home. Because you'll see if you watch this footage in the background, it goes far. Uh, and it returned back. And I just made it with like zero battery left. It's incredible how, how close that was. Um, but this is probably the, the longest drone footage I have of Shenzhen. Um, which is fantastic. And Shenzhen's another one of those cities where at night it looks incredible. I've got the same footage at night. But in the daytime, <clears throat> this is all downtown, by the way. This is the best part of Shenzhen, Futian district and uh, Lohu district and so on. If you go downstairs, though, and you walk around, you can see like those urban villages and stuff. It's really kind of ramshackle and, and not that great in a lot of areas. And that's how China is, man. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, <clears throat> Predcon1 says, it's my parents' 40th anniversary tomorrow. Here's hoping Seamilk makes it that far as well. Yeah, I'm sure he will. He seems to have a good thing going, you know. And I hope we all make it uh, past our 40th anniversaries for those of us who are married. Um, Get a Robo Shin1 says, or you can call it rotten tail construction. Yeah, you could call it all sorts of things. What you can call it is a bunch of nonsense shortcuts that are taken that put people's lives in danger. And uh, it's not only in the construction industry, it's also in the food and beverage industry too, and the medical and medicine industry. And it's a huge problem that faces China. And you know, here's, here's the thing, guys. We, we stand with the Chinese people, okay? That's what we do here on the China Show. I'm, I'm talking for sea milk as well. But we don't stand against the Chinese people. We stand with them. Because we know, we live there, and we suffered the same things they have to suffer. They don't have a voice to stand up and talk about these things, right? They suffer against a system which is unfair, a system that they cannot change because it's impossible to change in China. They struggle against all these scams and these uh, kind of state-condoned oppressive things that happen all the time. And the only way to ever fix these kind of things is to talk about them, okay? And unfortunately, your average Chinese person can't talk about these things because if they try to raise awareness or try to talk about them, they get a visit from the police. They get silenced. They get their uh, social media shut down. And the Chinese government, although they try very hard to silence both myself and uh, Sea Milk, they just can't silence us as easy as they can a Chinese national in China and outside of China. And that's why we do what we do. So I hope everybody realizes that's the end goal of what we're doing here is we stand with the Chinese people against the Chinese government. Okay. Uh, a possible person says, confirmed, Winston ate Matt. Wonston ate Matt. <laughs> and I hope you lock your doors at night as I hear a demon by the name of Creepy Milk is after you too. Uh, but for real, he deserves a break, and so do you. You both work hard. Thanks a lot, mate. I appreciate that. And uh, for those of you who don't know what who Wonston is, um, you if you're part of Shaban Ho, you'll know. It's kind of funny. It's a bit of lore over there. 
Um, okay, Dingo Vlog says, hello, bud, greetings from Romania. Thank you for providing an insight uh, regarding China. Hey, man, you're absolutely welcome. Okay. <clears throat> PB says, uh, Winston, did you watch this old Onion News clip? PRC celebrates status as number one polluter. No, it had to change it to PRC to buy this super chat. <laughs> oh, really? Well, thanks, man. I didn't know you had to change it. I, I don't know why that would have been blocked. Anyway, I haven't seen that. I'm going to look it up. The Onion's fantastic, or at least it used to be. Uh, Silverio Goodwin says, Should I draw Sarah AI in a more suggestive, sexy look and pose? I'm a digital artist, and I think she'll look even more younger and beautiful. Please do! Please do! Yes! Younger and beautiful! Any, anything like that, anything along those lines, we love that kind of stuff. And it's the kind of thing that we're going to, you know, put on the subreddit, on the Discord server, which, by the way, you guys can join Discord if you join the patron, any any tier of patron, you can join Discord. It's a lot of fun, all the memes and stuff there. And we'll include it in the show. If you put something out there, you could bet it's going to end up on the show. Uh, Chidio, Gollum has become an electric car expert and CCP shell. Seems that way. Oh, yeah, says, you work hard for this. Thanks, man. Hey, you're more than welcome. I just wish that it was uh, possible to get more of this information out for more people to see because it's uh, one of those things, man. China has a big budget, okay? And they have a lot of influence and uh, they have a lot of fingers in a lot of pies all over the place and they will try their absolute best to make you believe that Chongqing is 3,000 years ahead of uh, the West, you know? <laughs> Uh, Paul Senka says, this is a great show on tofu engineering. Many thanks, Winston, and congratulations to Matt and his wife. Well, thank you, and I'm sure he thanks you too. Um, RCM KPS, why didn't you claim copyright, Winston? We know it was your documentary. You know, I don't like to do that kind of thing. Here's the thing. If someone stole my entire documentary and uploaded it on their channel and said, this, I made this, yeah, sure, I'd uh, ask them to take it down. But I'm the kind of person who prefers to deal with people uh, with reason, if possible, rather than through using a sneaky means. Um, and by sneaky means, I'm not saying that a copyright claim is sneaky, but a lot of people abuse that system. A lot of people, rather than resolving an issue, will try to rather sue somebody or, or uh, report them to uh, Twitter or the police or whatever the case may be. And kind of, you know, it's, to me, it's a bit of a mark of a coward. If you haven't at least reached out and spoken to the person first, so I prefer not to do that kind of thing. I just, it annoys me when people use my documentary like that uh, to do CCP propaganda, number one. And, you know, number two, using um, somebody like my friend Sexy Cyborg uh, Naomi as, a, as propaganda, which, you know, is stupid to do that um, without her permission. And to use my stuff and then say subscribe for more. It's really just theft at that point, you know. Um, okay. What's next? Uh, R.C. Roscoe says, Love the show. The both of you provide a much-needed service to the world. Today, uh, truth is hard to come by. Thank you. So good. P-Frog, thanks. Well, thank you. And there's your P-Frog. <laughs> El uh, Duderino. El Duderino. Okay. Winston, you're doing great. Thanks. My question is, is the air quality like that every day from pollution? Really? Hey, you know, look, I can't, I can't say for sure, but I can tell you from my own personal experience, every day I was in Chongqing was awful. And um, uh, from the footage I'm seeing of now in uh, Chongqing, from all those, because I scrubbed a lot, pretty much every video shows pretty crappy air. So it's to be understood, there's a lot of industry out there. There's a lot of, uh, you know, coal burning power plants there. It's got a long way before it can be a, a cleaned up place, you know. I thought it had cleaned up by now since it's been, what, over a decade since I was there. But no, it's pretty much how I remember it. Maybe a slight, slightly bit better. But yeah, um, I do believe that it's bad a lot of the year. You can check out those, a in fact, you know, you can check out those AQI websites and stuff, but you still can't 100% trust that when it's China because they do modify those, the uh, sensors and stuff. They've been caught doing that a lot in the past. Um, Pleb says, yo, Winston, love your dad's channel. I could not believe he didn't die about 50 times. 
Also, RIP Jack and Jill, the goats. Also, the name of the beer from Vintok that your dad likes, if you know. Well, the name of the beer from Vintok that I like is called Vintok Lager, and it's one of the best beers I've ever drank. Um, I haven't drank it in a long time, though, so I might have to recant that, but I really like Vintok Lager. Um, you know, I love Taiwan beer, and uh, I think it's kind of similar to Taiwan beer. It's got a similar kind of taste and and feel to it. And for those of you who don't know, my father has his own YouTube channel where he talks about his uh, African adventures. It's called Surviving Africa. You can look it up. And um, he's, he's now started. I finally got around to teaching my parents how to edit. It took a long time and it's been dormant for about a year, but uh, they're filming and editing their own stuff now. So you can look forward to, uh, I think, every week or every second week they're putting out a video. So if you're interested in African stories, you know, of survival and adventure and so on, and lions and snakes and elephants and what have you, then go check out Surviving Africa. Um, I'd appreciate it. You can maybe leave a little uh, Serpent Today sent me or The China Show sent me or something. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Andres um, Mat- Matola, I'm sorry, I'm butchering that, says, this looks like a setting for a post-apocalyptic, I gotta find that, Um, yeah, for a post-apocalyptic video game, like Last of Us or Stray, (laughs) yeah, actually, it does, doesn't it, Ape of Naples says, bee milk hiding in the, what, Pocono's like a Viet Cong, I don't really know what you're getting at there, man, (laughs) anyway, uh, C... Das177 says, thank you for telling people to stay away from Hollywood as a so- as a SoCal resident. Yeah, dude, I was, you know, I went during COVID with Seamilk and um, we filmed it. We actually have it on the ADV China channel. I drove in my little white Firebird and we went up there and I was not expecting it to be that bad. I'll give it, we went up to Beverly Hills and it was nice up there. You know, we drove up there and then we went down to Hollywood and it was literally just homeless people and you know, sort of drug addicts and stuff. And it was really kind of off-putting. Let's put it that way. It's not like I would never take my kid there. Because, you know, you think Hollywood. Oh, you know, you come to America, you got to see Hollywood. I'd say you come to America, don't see Hollywood. Go to like Disney World or something instead or Universal Studios or something if you're going there or Legoland or whatever. But just, you know, Hollywood's kind of a, a dive and it's just full of Scientology buildings and weird stuff. Anyway, you can check it out if you want to see what it looks like from driving through and you know, whatnot, on the ADV China channel. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Eric, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. It says, that China show we will be first guy to accidentally fill his EV with diesel. Great show as usual. Congrats to Seamilk and his wife as well. Yeah, I can't believe how pathetic that is. The dude's supposed to be an expert on, on EVs. And he even in his video showed one of the EVs I had in, the, in those drone shots. Um, he showed them as an EV, and then he says that they can't be EVs, and I'm lying. It's all petrol cars because they've got f- gas caps on them or f- gas fuel tanks and stuff. Come on, dude. Like, it's the most basic, rudimentary thing. If you think that's a good way to debunk someone, all you've done is just shown that you you don't know anything about electric vehicles, especially not Chinese electric vehicles, and you should probably just shut up, you know? <clears throat> Anyway, one of 19 says, thanks, Serpent Today, for addressing the EV storage fields. I've taken this person off my watch list. It's a wild west looking for le- it's the wide west looking for legit channels. Yeah, wh- it's the wild west. You know, here's the thing. I kind of get it. As I explained in the China show, is that, um, I mean, sorry, what am I saying? Xia Ban Ho. Is that uh, I think people like him just fall for the Chinese propaganda hook, line, and sinker. They haven't lived there. They don't actually know how it works. They haven't like, I, I drove Chinese cars for over a decade in China, including some of those EVs, which I, I tried out. I've got footage of it somewhere. Anyway, I lived there. I speak the language. I understand how it all works. But they see this shiny, look, Chongqing is 3,000 years ahead of um, <clears throat> the West type stuff. And they deeply believe that China is ahead of the game with technology and EV stuff. And all. They really believe that it's this shiny, can do nothing wrong kind of situation. And so they fall for that. And then when they see someone like me pointing out an actual truth of what's going on, they can't handle it. They have to fight back. 
that or they're heavily invested in Chinese EV companies like BYD and stuff, and they probably see me as a threat to their shares portfolio or some nonsense. Um, and number three, I guess um, they're just getting paid. I can't prove any of that, but those are my speculations. If you want to know more about that, I spoke about it fairly at length on Shaban Ho. Um, Javier Blanco says a 12 pack of Coco Cola on me. Now, guys, <clears throat> Coco Cola means uh, you probably guessed it, Coca Cola in Chinese. But it's one of those transliterations which is actually very cool. And, you know, there's something about Chinese language that I love is when they do these kind of things because uh, um, it's like ke ko. It, mean, um, it means like really good mouth. Ke le is like good fun type thing. So if you translate it, it actually really brands the brand very well. It's like something that's really good, you know, a lot of fun and very good in your mouth, okay? Um, and it sounds like Coca-Cola when you say it. So there's certain things uh, in the Chinese language which, which I love like that, by the way. Okay, GunFox61 says, gifted 20 of the China Show memberships. Well, thank you, GunFox61. That's incredibly generous of you. And that's what I like about our community is that we are a proper community here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of all this, like, in this together. And I look forward to Friday's um, hopefully just as much as you do. And the reason I look forward to it is not so I can get up here and talk about nonsense, but it's because I know that uh, we have this incredible audience and I can interact with you and it's uh, really is the highlight of my week. So thank you very much. Matthew Booth says, I've been to Chongqing and those nighttime videos are definitely deceiving. During the day, it looks so different, like night and day. Haha. <laughs> can I get a Yao Jia? You certainly can. Let me find the Yao Jia over here. I've got it hidden away here because I didn't really want to have to play it. <laughs> there you go. And it is. I mean, come on. Like, I can't stand these, like, Chongqing is the future cyberpunk nonsense and they, they show this, uh, this, gl this glitzy LED at night thing. Because I know what it looks like in the day. Well, now so do you. Isn't it great to actually have some knowledge so you can say, yeah, that's really nice. Those lights are great. Sam W. Winston, back in China, how could you tell beer alcohol was fake? Well, here's the thing. Um, I did uh, very often drink fake beer. And the, the, the reason for this is sometimes you can tell right off the bat. If you're sober and you sit down at a barbecue restaurant, you order a Qingdao, you know, Zui um, Dong Dao, as you say, like the, the coldest one you've got. And they'd bring it out and you drink it. Usually the first couple of beers they give you are real, okay? If they give you a fake one off the bat, you'll be like, mm, this tastes skunked or flat or whatever, and then you're like, oh, this is probably fake, and then you just don't drink it. You move on, or you ask them to bring you a real one. And that's kind of funny, is because sometimes you ask the boss to bring you a real one, and you'll be like, okay, and then he'll bring you a real one. Because they all acknowledge that this is a thing. I mean, you're selling a, you've got a little side of the road barbecue stall. You're not making a lot of money, so in order to make more profit, you sell fake beer, because then you can buy it for less and sell it for the same price. But what they would do, and I caught one guy out once, is they give you real ones in the beginning. And then when you're a little bit drunk, they start to bring the fake ones because by then you're so kind of out of it that you don't really notice <clears throat> or you're a little bit buzzed or tipsy or whatever and you're not really noticing it. It's just, you know what it's like when you drink, right? But one time he bought this fake stuff. We'd been drinking real ones. He bought this fake stuff that was so fake that I could not only were the labels like all skew and weird and stuff, but it tasted completely different. And I called him out on it. And I was like, why are you giving me fake beer? And he just said, ah, oh, timbo dong, timbo dong, which means I don't understand. I don't understand. So that was his excuse. I don't understand. He just didn't talk about it. I kept saying, but why are you giving fake beer? What's going on here? And he was like, oh, I don't understand. And then he pretended like he couldn't understand Chinese, which is pathetic, just to avoid the conversation. So yeah, it's one of those things. Um, hey, Gunfox61 just gifted 20 more um, memberships. That's incredible. You're a very generous person. Thank you. Um, Jonathan says, uh, hey, Winston, holding the fort well for the channel, currently studying my uh, CCNA exam. Any suggestions for study material? Hmm. I'll have to get back to you on that one. You know what? We get asked these kind of questions a lot about, uh, you know, studying Chinese and so on, and the best ways to do these things. And um, um, this is like a certified um, Cisco network. Is this a certified C Cisco network thing? So I'd have to actually make a proper video for you separately, because I'm, when it comes to tech stuff, 
I kind of want to make my own channel, a different channel. I've started a little thing. You can look it up. If you search obsolete futures, um, I started a little channel idea and I'm going to start doing some things and I'll probably address it there. If it's got to do with China, if I'm reading it wrong and it's a Chinese thing, uh, Seamilk has got some fantastic videos about learning Chinese and I'll ask him to weigh in on it next time. <clears throat> Hyperban <clears throat> says, now that Seamilk was gone, we can secretly agree N64 is awesome, right? Also, what happened to Piss Egg Stream? Uh, <laughs> sorry, but C C60, uh, N64 sucks so bad. I mean, I probably hate it more than he does. Um, <clears throat> granted, there are, what, like maybe two or three games on there that are okay, but you know what? I, I prefer a, a Philips CDI to an N64. Um, and that's true. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the Piss Egg stream, you can, you can find it on China Fact Chasers. For those of you who don't know, we have a Clips channel, which is not just Clips. Stuff gets re-edited, okay, and uh, re-uploaded on, on there. Um, the little sections of the show, it's called China Fact Chasers. And we got the Piss Egg clip back on there. We resolved a little thing there. We'll talk about it in the future. Um, hey, Winston, give a cotton. If not that, a pig bay for Seamilk. Oh, you betcha. Makes me irritate at the mirror. Oh, I see. Old Doc Slothington says, I know flying solo ain't easy, but good show. Have a good holiday weekend, Winston, and everyone else. See you all on Monday. Thank you very much, uh, Old Doc Slothington, and uh, I appreciate that. Kuala1203 says, How is China responding uh, to what happened in Russia last Friday? That's actually kind of interesting. Um, man, it's done that snapping thing. Let me... Uh, okay, there we go. <clears throat> They didn't respond to it at first, so while it was happening, there was no news and it wasn't talked about at all. Um, and then when they did respond, they said Putin showed his strength by reigning in um, or showing his leadership skills or some shit like that. So they basically pretended it was a non-issue and that Putin was a strong man, um, from what I gather, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> where are we? Okay, here. Hey, I'm from Cincinnati and didn't hear about the soy. Uh, we'll have to check it out. I think spy, not sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, Romania is awesome. Loved it. Enjoy the weekend. Love to love your and your dad's videos. Thank you very much. And again, please check out my dad's uh, channel if you get the chance. If you're interested in African adventures, it's called Surviving Africa. Yeah, and that's probably enough plugs for today. <laughs> Gunfox sixty one uh, says, "Welcome to shout out to you. Thank you." Uh, to MCNA, who hates China? I hate Zelda. I hate N64 and I hate everything good. Q, where is Matt? I'm late. What did you guys do over the break? Fourth of July plans too? Uh, play the Ferris wheel, make it longer. Play the massage table guy? What are you... Oh, oh, play the... Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had the... Uh, where is that thing? Ah! <laughs> and um, let me get back to here so I can get the... It's preposterous. Oh, no, that, that was the wrong one. You meant this one. <laughs> uh, definitely going to have a barbecue and, um, you know, the fireworks and all that kind of nonsense. It's 4th of July after all. And uh, my daughter really loves it. Okay. Uh, to MCNA. Drink a Bud Light with Matt for one of the episodes. Make it a competition. No, thank you. No, I'd rather drink water. Um, I, all weird political stuff aside, I never liked Bud Light anyway. I thought it sucked. Um, you know. And I normally like sort of light beers. And uh, if I'm going to drink a light beer, I'm going to drink Dos Equis or I'll drink um, Coors Light. Yeah. But if I can avoid all of those, I'll drink Taiwan beer. That's that's actually my favorite beer these days. Mm. Gunfox61 says, 11 months, one more for a year. <clears throat> I'm seeing more and more pro-Chinese military and Navy saying the US will run away and not fight. I laugh at the videos. Yep. And so do I. John Speaks says, keep up the great work. Oh, do you mean, you don't perhaps mean great work, do you? Thank you. <laughs> QR says, there's one good thing which has come out of the COVID pandemic and the subsequent ripple effects. Many people around the world, especially in the West, have woken up and now they see China for what it really is. Well, I think a lot of people are ignorant to the dangers posed by the Com Communist Party of China because... 
A lot of people take their Western mindset or wherever they're from mindset and try to apply it to China without realizing that you're dealing with a government that doesn't care and doesn't care an iota for human life. They just care about power and they care about control. And uh, we saw that with the COVID pandemic, what they've done. And there've been so many recent revelations about how they ordered all the, the samples destroyed and things like that. You know, the Chinese government really is responsible for this pandemic at the end of the day and should be held accountable. There are lots of other players who had a hand in it too, like good old, hey, hey, ball sack. you know, ball sack. ball sack and others, not just him, tons of people who were complicit in helping the Communist Party hide, you know, the origins and what was going on and allowed it to spread that much. But at the end of the day, um, it's still the source that needs to be held accountable. <clears throat> 2MTNA2 says, explain to us why Alabama is one of the best states in the U.S. Is it looked down upon in general? I like the state personally. It's, it's one of the best states in the U.S. because um, it's nice. Uh, Slinky Kinky said, are there alternative ways of sourcing products from China instead of using Alibaba like I had to? I know, not ideal. How would you go about it? Should I use a sourcing agent? I don't know if using a sourcing agent's any better, really. I'd, I mean, Amazon. You know what you need to do is you need to use companies that provide local jobs. Now, I know when you buy from Amazon, you're getting like 80% of what you're buying on there these days is just some product from China. But you are employing the local delivery driver who, you know, the, you, the Amazon delivery driver. You are employing the people that do the packing in the warehouse. You are employing the IT staff that keep the, the website running and all that. So you are actually still helping provide local jobs. Um, so, you know, from that point of view, I'd say try to use local companies in your country or, you know, whatever to try and support your own local economy more. So use things like Temu, they use all these loopholes and they're heavily subsidized and all that. <clears throat> and you actually end up uh, contributing to the loss of jobs because now uh, there are no local people involved. It comes straight from China and they use that loophole in the United States Postal Service and others and that um, I did a whole video about it on Temu. And so what you end up doing is you're giving money straight to China and nobody on this side in your country gets anything. And so you actually end up screwing over your local countrymen. So, you know. <clears throat> 80s game guy. Have you tried the McDonald Grimace birthday shake? I have not. To MCNA. Uh, Mizu wants you to go film a 30-minute documentary about the great state of Alabama. They hate the state. I love it. <laughs> Dude, next time I'm in Alabama, I'll film something. I promise. Uh, Raven, who is a member, says, thanks for the show. Great as always. Thank you very much. And uh, Javier Blanco, do you ever, do you, <clears throat> do you have any pissed egg soundbite? You know what? I'm pretty sure I do. Where is it? Mm, yeah, and I've got another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there. I hope that helped you out. <laughs> uh, Keyboard Jihadi says, I just got paid today and figured I'd share some of the love. Been a long time subscriber. I miss the old videos of you guys exploring China, but I appreciate you guys raising awareness about the CCP. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your generosity. I honestly do. Thank you very much. I hope you're going to have a fantastic weekend and uh, a good 4th of July. If you are in America and if you're not, have a great weekend anyway. Um, and Mr. Eddie Lomax said, great. I guess he means like, great. Great. Like, all right, looks like we've reached the end of our questions today. That's uh, fairly quick. That's uh, probably one of the quickest shows we've ever had. You know how it goes, I put together this uh, media pack and I was thinking, man, this media pack's like half an hour long. It's going to take me forever to get through it. This is going to be a long show. And so I, um, I had a bunch of extra stuff I wanted to talk about. And I was like, nah, I'll just leave that for next time. You know, I'll do, do it on the next show. But then it turns out I just completely, you know, motored through the whole media pack and then i'm like oh wait that didn't take as long as i thought this always happens always <laughs> um anyway so i guess that's it unless there are any any more questions we could probably call it a day for today <clears throat> yeah okay so guys here's the thing i do want to just quickly finish this show off today um 
by extending once again a, a very heartfelt thank you to all of you out there who watch the show and who are, who are participating in the China show and anything that myself and Sea Milk do. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff lined up for you. Um, I'll be having another video on the Serpent ZA channel next week. And of course, Sea Milk will have a video for you very soon too. And uh, we'll see you on Shaban Ho on Monday if you are a uh, patron, you know. And uh, I'll be seeing you with Sea Milk next week here on the show. So things will get back to normal next week. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic bloody weekend. And whatever you do, I hope you stay safe and uh, just have fun and stay awesome. Until next time, you know the drill. As I've just said, stay awesome. And I'm not going to cut myself off this time. So let's do it. Five, four, three, two.